So what course did you get your start at in disc golf and when was it? <laughs> well, my dad took me out in 99, I was five years old. 99, five years old. Yep, so I'm 28. So I've you're- been, I've been playing disc golf for 23 years. So welcome back to Beyond the Basket. Today I'm here with Corey Ellis at Supreme 18 at Jones Park in Emporia, Kansas. We're here at hole one. It is a 291 foot island hole. You are able to lay up short of the creek here, but once you're past the creek, it is an island. So it's really gonna be a two or a four like Corey already mentioned. Um, I don't know that a lot of the top players are gonna lay it up. I would say most are gonna go for it, but it's gonna be a pretty interesting starting hole with the winds we get here in Kansas. So. Corey, I'm gonna let you go first. Let's see what we got today. Oh, lucky. Just like that. So lucky. That's <laughs> all you need to do all weekend, man. Yeah. What, uh, what was that? That was a zone. Okay. Hmm. Would you say it plays closer to like 250? No, it's probably like, not less, not much less than okay. 290. Probably 275, two, 270. Oh, sneak through. Oh, there's that four we talked about. Are you a coffee drinker? Oh yeah. Nice. Yeah. What's your coffee order? Uh, I always get hazelnut cream. Hazelnut cream. Yeah. So like, like a latte or? No, just, just like an Americano. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Do you have a favorite joint? It, well. Or are you like it from everywhere? Yeah, well, I gotta get it from everywhere because we're always on the road, you know, yeah. there's no special place. Is this doable me. going through here? Yeah. So big into Starbucks then since they're everywhere? Oh or? yeah, Starbucks, Dunkin'. Star yeah. I, I prefer Dunkin', but. Prefer Starbucks. Dunkin'. Okay. But, but Starbucks is a little, uh, more consistent, I think. Okay, yeah. Yeah, big big coffee drinker. Yeah. I like my just regular black. Oh, yeah. Ice preferred, but you know, we'll take it however we get it. Yeah, my, my fiance Molly just says I'll, I enjoy the creamer more than I enjoy the coffee. <laughs> Load it in. Oh, let's go, baby. Never mind, it's a three. There's that three <laughs> that we never talked about. That was sick. Yeah, you, know, you just got to throw it in, I guess. <laughs> that was awesome. Woo! Oh, this stuff's weird. Yeah, it's like rubber. Wow, that's interesting. <laughs> Saving three, baby. Let's go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's why we practice. We'll give you a mulligan on the first one. <laughs> yeah. We'll give you that too. Yeah, I think it's in front of that pine tree too. Should be perfect. Nice. So this is your first year fully touring, right? Yes, sir. So going into that, like, what kind of backups did you bring? What kind of things did you bring to like, if you do lose one of those discs you just talked about, like, what, what's your plan? Uh, I definitely or, brought way too many. I can tell you that. So that's probably a good thing, though. Oh right? yeah, yeah. I guess you could say you can't have too many, but when you, you know you only got so much car space, when <laughs> you only have so yeah. many cubic <laughs> yeah. feet to work with. Yeah, I don't know. I've got quite the collection of forces back home. I probably have freaking. 100 forces. So you have so. enough to lose a couple. Oh yeah, yeah. It's just uh it's just in the age which that ones they get. Do, well, right. It's whenever you lose a, a nice seasoned one is, is when it hurts, you know. If it's a brand new disc you're just like, "Ah, oh, whatever, I can just replace it." But picking and choosing which ones I want to even risk throwing near yeah. around water. Like some of those old pink pop top uh like 08 to 2012 those forces are incredibly hard to find yeah so i don't even want to risk throwing it near water right some of us were actually talking to bob about 
potentially making a more overstable version of the force. Oh, really? Yeah, because uh, sometimes these headwinds, they just want to hold over a little bit. Yep. We want something that we can actually trust, like, flat into a strong headwind. Yeah. Kind of like a faster Captain's Raptor. Yeah, and with where today's game is going, players are throwing the disc faster and faster all the time. Oh, yeah, and especially, like, we're going to be out here again for Worlds, you know, it's, it's all this wind. Go in. I didn't mean to throw it that hard. Let's try again. It's kept on going. That's better. There you go. That's what you're looking for. Float it in there. Ooh. Yeah, a little deep. Nice pot. Thanks. Hole five, 385 par three. It's a little downhill. Got the OB road back to the right. And uh, this little tree that acts like a bunker on the left. You just want to try and keep it below the limbs and get it across the little ditch there. Oh, that's that bunker tree. Oh, a little roll out, friendly. All right, so tournament day, tournament weekend. What's your go-to snacks in the bag? Like, what are you munching on during the round? Or oh, a double G craft jerky. Of That's it. Oh. You got, or... Well, no, I I usually try to keep a banana in the bag. Okay. Uh, actually, I really like uh, tuna. Tuna. Yeah, cause you get these little packets of tuna that have like uh, little sporks. Yeah. In the package with it, so you just throw it in your bag and eat it up during the round. It's good protein. That's an interesting one. I've never heard that one. Well, yeah, it's like it, protein's a better sustainable energy. Right. But than I just, just never like thought about doing those like little tuna packets. Like, because I, I like tuna, so. So tuna, you gotta have double G's. What's your favorite flavor of double G? Uh, or do you have a favorite I like flavor? the smashed cracked pepper and the garlic lovers a lot. Okay. Hot boom sauce is good. I like it all, honestly. I'm not picky when it comes to the jerky. Oh, look at that wind. It almost went in still. That was so crazy. <laughs> Let me try this again with this new guy. That was better. There you go. That one's earning its stripes. Yeah. Least favorite thing is the man-made OB, right? Yeah, yeah. Is there I, a point that you're okay with man-made OB, or do you feel like... Well, so, most holes out here kind of need it, just because it would just be an open field and... Right. You know, so is there like, like a fine middle ground we could like come to, or is it kind of just like I, tough I think, to find it? Well, I think it depends on the piece of property that you're working with. In Kansas, there's just so much open field, there's not as much wooded golf, so... Right. You pretty much need the OB. We got her. And my zone's like out here somewhere. What's that? My zone's like over yonder. There's no way we're gonna see it. It, gets, it drops off pretty quick right there. Dang. Maybe it'll, somebody will go get her. Probably. All right, we're here at hole 10. 833, par four. OB on the left, but you really wanna turn it over, but there's also OB up on the right side if you turn it too much. So if you're just on a sidearm, the wind, it could just pick it up and take it straight OB. But you gotta play to this landing zone and then it's a really tough approach up to the green with a low ceiling. I think you'll see a lot of people try a roller, but I don't think that's the play at all. I think you just need to keep it low and drive it straight. It's also OB up behind the basket. So it's a really technical par four. I think it's one of the best holes on the course, in my opinion. Is that too far right, would you say? Or? No, that's almost perfect. Okay. Uh, the wind just kind of killed it. Uh, you want to be a little further than that, but as far as how right it is, it's good. Keep 
keep going right. That'll play. Yeah. So if you were to build a dream card, who would it be? Like people on tour? Or be just whoever in general? you want. Play a uh, tournament round, dream card. Uh, I would have to say. Ricky, Matteo, uh, my dad, and probably Chris Dickerson. That's a good card. Yeah, that'd be that would be pretty sick. That would probably be. probably will never happen, <laughs> but it would be really cool. This is pretty much impossible. Like. It takes like, it would take something miraculous. Perfect roller or something? Yeah, but with a headwind it's not gonna work. Right. Not looking good. Four is good on this hole though. Wow. That's a good roll. That is a great shot too take, from a standstill. Yeah, I'd take that all day. Yeah, it's uh, it's funny actually. You say Matty O. We um, on the way out here, Isaac and I were driving, and with like three hours to go, he like pulls up behind us because he already saw us on the road. We pull in to get gas, and he j jumps in behind us. He's like, "Yeah, my phone's almost dead, and it's not charging." So I figured I was just gonna follow you guys the rest of the way. <laughs> so for like probably an hour and a half, he follows us, and then. As soon as we get on I-35, he jets past us, gives us the peace sign, on his way. He's so funny. <laughs> there it is. Oh, see? The little tiny nose angle difference. <laughs> oh, man. This course is going to eat people's lunch this week. Oh, yeah. If it's like this. Oh, it's gonna be like this. Too. Straight stealing your lunch money, folks. It might even be, even be worse with the wind and the rain. <laughs> How do you feel about playing in the rain? I don't mind it if it's not windy. <laughs> so have you ever had the opportunity to design a course? Uh, no, not really. There's uh, There's been a time back home where somebody asked me to like help with some pin positions and stuff, but I'd really like to get the chance to design my own course. So like you assisted in that one, would you say? Yeah, in a way, yeah. Okay. Have you thought about like going into like course design at all now that you're oh, quite will. the touring player? I will for eventually, you know, maybe when I'm finished touring yeah. uh, more so. But uh, I've had some people come and like want to help me or get me to, to help design a course. And yeah. uh, it's just not quite worked out yet. I mean, because it is a lot of work to design a course. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like there's a lot of time that goes into, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, just even before you even start trimming, anything like that. Like I could definitely see, like, maybe getting it into in the off-season, like okay. getting into it in the off-season. Trying to do one or two in the off-season? Yeah, that'd be cool. Nice. Then, uh, it's just finding the property and the people willing to do it and having the funds and everything. You yep. Know? Well, so would you think your first course you design you'd want to do in, like, your home area? or like you Oh, for really sure. Care? I, I definitely would like to do it in West Virginia. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be awesome. still be long that'll be long maybe okay. I like I like the look of it though oh Yankee doodle so lucky come on wind push it ace that one oh that would have been funny the black ace. That was nasty. I've gotten so many black aces before. Really? Like, at least like five or six. I've never had a black ace. Like during tournaments too. Wow. Well, there's this, that Seth Burton course, when I got that ace uh, you asked me about earlier. Yeah. I actually black aced that same day on the, before the final <laughs> nine. 
Well, so like it was a course that had like two baskets, and they like didn't get pulled like yeah, there's round type of deal. There's there's two courses, and both of them have two baskets, on and and some of them are directly in the line that you're trying to throw, and they don't move them because they have all the other divisions playing the the courses throughout the day too. So that's always interesting. I mean, that's so much extra man work for a tournament director, but well, the, I think. In that, that most cases, you can move them slightly right or left of the fairway and get them out of the way. Yeah, at it's least just, pull them and lay them down type of deal. Well, well, I just meant like, just change the pin position. Oh. Just, yeah, just, just put it on the side or something, you yeah. know. With playing, practicing, like what kind of like, what kind of new like stresses or stuff have come from you learning this like new lifestyle? Well, or maybe you don't have any stresses. It's, maybe it's been very enjoyable. Like, or actually, this this year has been more stress free than ever before because uh, I'm getting a lot of help from my sponsors now after my performance last year. And before, it's all I'm just worrying about how much money I'm making uh, at each event just to, so I can pay my bills. Right. You know? And now I'm I'm fortunate enough to not have to worry as much on how much money I'm making out of the tournament, but it's still there. It's just, I'm probably better at managing it in my own mind now, is what it is. Oh, oh you landed OB with the Raptor even. Yeah. All right, muscles. I mean, like, well, it's downhill the whole way with the wind just pushing. And... Uh-huh, that's what all touring pros say. <laughs> like, I don't throw that far, it's just downhill. They got some kind of excuse for the wind, whatever it may be. Hey, at least yours is inbound over there, <laughs> you know? I'm quite lucky, so. All right, so, I'm sure you've heard of the game <laughs> Mary Kill, right? No. Never? No. Nope. So, it's a game in terms of where you have to decide to kill somebody, <laughs> somebody, or marry somebody. Oh, yeah, 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 I've heard that, yeah. So, we've got a little spin on that here. Okay. And it's bag, ace, or OOP, okay? And your choices are Challenger, Buzz, and Force. What are you doing, where are you going with them? So, so which one are you gonna ace with, bag for life, and then out of production, gone forever? That is a terrible decision to make. I would have to say Ace with the buzz, out of production with the force, bag of challenger. It's <laughs> a pretty tough one. Well, I want a more of a stable force anyway. All right, <laughs> all right, all right. That's, you got me on that one then. You're terrible. We should, we? Uh, we should have some putting clinics for me. I hey, think you're pretty good at it. <laughs> yeah, we could maybe work that out. So we saw it a few holes back, but from what I hear, you're known for your standstill power. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I got it. So I like, threw, threw a few at Deglo last year that people were kind of freaking out about. So how do you feel like you've been able to figure that out because I would say from a standstill, you throw it in a tier above most players. Well, in West Virginia, everything's on a hill. So a lot of times you don't even, re you, there's no way you can run up. Uh, so I just kind of developed that from throwing on a hill so much where you gotta, you know, keep your balance and learn how to shift your weight properly. Yeah, so you're really like forced to learn how to throw that that type of shot. Yeah, exactly. Nice. It's always interesting, like the lay of the land and how it like forms different players from like East Coast to West Coast. Yeah, it's true. Because there's so many different like types of golf nowadays with, you know, woods, short, tight, technical woods, wide open golf courses. Oh yeah, you can always tell like when people are from the middle of the country, if with just the way they putt. Because they, most everybody's a spin putter in the middle of the country because you got to because of the wind. Yep. I'm gonna try to throw a little Luna at it on the right side.
That's fine. You'd rather be long and safe than short and OB. It's literally my most stable force. It just Was that no it just good? Turned over, Too far yeah. right? Oh, oh it's way, yeah, it's OB by a mile. No way, really? Okay, wow. Huh. Oh yeah, yeah, that's uh, OB, I think. So you want to try and get left of that flag? Yeah, yeah. That that's good. as good as I can do it. Until I get my Force OS. Yeah, yours is safe right here. Oh, let's go, baby. Oh wait, no, that's mine, sorry. Oh, he got me, folks. Yeah, I'm over here, OB. Well, that's Bushnell. Let's get out of the Bushnell. All right, how far do you think? I'm going to say 500. That's pretty good. 510. Ooh, pretty yeah, guess. so pretty good. Too much space. That's all I was looking for. Ah, this wind, dude. There you go. Hey. Wish I could find more of these old forces, dude. They're so hard to find the, the, ask the, ask the first camera. runs. Maybe we'll get somebody. Yeah. If you guys have any of these old first run, they gotta be pop top forces. They're really hard to come by. All, so many first runs are just flat and they need that little bit of pop top to add stability and glide. So hit me up. If that got left enough, it's really good. I don't know if it, I thought it was just gonna dump left and it kind of just dropped on me. Oh no! Really? Oh, that's dead. Oh, that might be OB. <laughs> that is OB. Corey, since you started playing, what's been the biggest change in disc golf, would you say? And the most impactful that's like happened for like the entire like whole of disc golf? Uh, the, just the people actually getting paid is, is the biggest thing. You know, people are finally able to make like a, a serious living and even beyond a serious living, you know, with Macbeth and like Ricky and the, you know, people becoming millionaires. Yep. Through disc golf, you know, yeah. it's, it's incredible to see. Would you ever ever have thought that was going to happen when you started playing? Absolutely. Good. Yep. I did. I, I I think that we we will eventually be close to how big golf is, but probably never reach quite that level. Yeah. Uh, at least in, in my life. All right, folks. That's beyond the basket this week. If you would like to check out all 18 holes, head on over to our Patreon page. I want to once again thank Corey Ellis for being here. Corey, is there anything you'd like to say or anybody you'd like to shout out before we get going today? Uh, yeah, I'd like to thank uh, Chris Dickerson for hooking me up with one of his Challenger OSs. Uh, they're doing great work in the wind right now, and uh, they'll be getting a lot of putts in. Also, uh, my family, my fiance back home, all the love and support from those guys, and uh, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for tuning in to this week's Beyond the Basket with Nick Hansen. As always, how we doing? Keep it moving.